Well, we are at the Wanderer Sports Club here and we are here for the BDO Namibian as they present the first PSA squash tournament. Well, I'm really excited for this one. I mean, rumor has it, or as I have heard right now, uh, the ambassador of Egypt is also here to come witness some great sportsmanship here. But you guys should stay tuned. There is a lot coming your way. The tournament is scheduled to take place starting today till Saturday. So there is a lot going on. But for now, let's take a break as we are, we'll be back to you guys in studio. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears, all your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Network televisions, uh, bid you a welcome, a hearty welcome, I must say, to the first ever squash broadcast by our channel. And welcome to the BDO Namibian National Squash Open Championships for 2023. And there you see some of the spectators already. Four courts here. We are broadcasting from the Wanderers uh, Courts in Vintuk. And we'll be with you the same time for the next four days. My pleasure also to introduce my co-commentator, Stephen Berry. Now, what is his background? He's the GM, General Manager of Wanderers Sport Club. Used to be chairperson at uh, Wanderers and he's an avid squash player still. Uh, Stephen, I suppose this is a big tournament, maybe the biggest the association has hosted up to date in Namibia. Yeah, Donny, you're 100% correct. Definitely the biggest. Um, as you can see there on the board at the bottom there, PSA Challenger Tour. It's the first time Namibia's ever had the privilege of hosting a PSA Challenger Tour. Uh, just to enlighten the, the public about that, a PSA is like Squash's equivalent of the ATP with tennis or PGA with golf. So it stands for Professional Squash Association. So all the players that are taking part in the PSA division for this tournament are professional squash players. And we've managed to attract a full men's and full ladies draw for, the, for that division. And it's great exposure for the Namibian players because a couple of our guys are playing in the PSA division, but also they've, they've accepted a rule, which is not a normal uh, way of doing things, but they've allowed us, the players that lose their first round matches get it relegated down to the A division so they can carry on playing because normally when you lose you're out. Uh, this was a nice way of attracting players from other countries but it also gives a lot more of our players who are playing in the A division to, to play against you know, these, these professional players who we don't normally get the, the opportunity to play against. So it's a great honor. We're very excited and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great week, a week of squash. Yes, and uh, next week uh, we'll talk about later, a bit later about that as well. Uh, I think it's another first a, a four-nation uh, competition as well here yeah, at the same courts. Yeah, Donny, it's, um, they've dubbed this as the Squash Festival uh, for the week. It's, it's, it's really exciting. Um, we've got a Four Nations, which is proudly sponsored by Visions Consulting. So a big thank you to them for, for getting involved and bringing this to Namibia. The last time we had a big event like this, I think, was in 2014 when we hosted the World Juniors, also at Wanderers. And the year before that, we hosted the All-African Games. So we haven't had big, high-level squash like this for nearly 10 years. And obviously with the juniors, most of the club players weren't able to play in that. So it's been more than 10 years since local players could actually take part in an event like this. And this quadrangular series is a good test to see where us as Namibians are. Uh, we'll be taking on the best five squash players from South Africa who are incredibly strong. Uh, Devolt von Nikar, who is the number one South African who will be here, he's, he's, he's just past the top 100 in the world, I believe now. 
Uh, JP Brits, you know, they've got, they've got a very strong team. Damon Grunewald, who's also here. Um, Rudy, Rudy, Grunewald, uh, Rudy Grunewald. Um Sorry, not Grunewald, Rudy van Niekerk. So there's a, it's a very strong team that's coming up. Uh, we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back after that. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future. Not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. All 55 matches scheduled for today, 39 of them already finished. So we're starting at four o'clock with the uh, professional uh, squash association, that part of the competition. So we have 16 matches left, of which we will we'll bring you four live on NTV and our other uh, platforms. And the players are warming up there. Uh, that's for the match between Mariam Ashraf. She is from Egypt, uh, ranked 7th. And Audrey Lambert, she's Namibian, ranked 10th. Uh, Stephen, what do you expect from the first match? Yeah, look, um, the Egyptians are a really, really strong country when it comes to squash. Uh, if you look at the world rankings with both men and ladies, six men and six ladies come from... Egypt out of the top 10 so squash is their national sport they eat breathe sleep poop repeat squash you know that's all they do so that's it's it's Audrey's gonna have a her work cut out for her she is a former Namibia number one uh, but she's she's also not in her younger years of squash if we can call it that anymore so she's um, it's gonna be a great experience for her I mean she did play represent Namibia at the world squash tournament in France about 15 years ago uh, so she's got a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge of the game. But Miriam Ashraf, Ashrafal is, she's a young girl. I was watching her training yesterday. She hits the ball cleanly. She hits the ball very tight, um, very consistently. So I think, I think Audrey's going to have a work cut out for her. But um, look, let's see what she can do. I mean, she has been playing the game for a long time. And uh, she might have a few tricks up her sleeve. Home soil advantage, at least one can say. I think she's going to have a lot of support, but if you look on the pavilion, we've also got the, the Egyptian ambassador here with his crowd and their flags and everything, and I know the Egyptian crowds are always very loud, so they're definitely going to be backing Miriam. Um, but let's hope that the Namibian crowd gets behind Audrey and shows their full support and gets behind her. Yeah, if you are sitting at home, maybe come around to the Wondrous Sports Centre here in Pioneers Park in Vintu. And Stephen, I will ask people to bring along their Namibian flags to come and support our Namibian players. Please, guys, we need it. We need it. Um, we're a few Namibians here. And we need all the support we can get because the people that have come up have really come to play and they're definitely going to be bringing the best with them. So all the support we can get, we'll really appreciate it. Uh, Stephen, have we seen a development in terms of numbers, in terms of participation? in squash as a sport in Namibia over the last five or ten years? Maybe. Donny, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an easy question but a difficult question at the same time because we have had periods where the squash has grown significantly. Um, I remember when I took over as the chairman of Wondrous Squash in about 20, I think it was 2016, we were struggling to get any ladies taking part. We had a very big development drive and we got our numbers up and our numbers are growing all the time. Um, but then we have a bit of a lull again and then it picks up again. But if I look at where we were about 10 years ago compared to where we are now, squash is healthy. I mean, Wondrous Club alone has 250 members. We've got a 
I almost want to say a world-class squash coach who's, who's in charge of development here at Wanderers and Sean Watton. Um, you know, so we've got a very good development system. We've got very good coaches. Max and Jalo, who's Namibia's number one, does a lot of coaching too. Um, down at the coast, they've got Devin Savage and Emmanuel Amarongo in Wellfish Bay. Very good coaches. So the juniors come through. I think the biggest challenge is it's not a school sport. Yeah. The schools don't offer squash. And if you look at the schools in South Africa, virtually every school, every university has school leagues. I mean, a friend of mine, Andy Furry, who's going to be commentating a bit later, went to Weinberg. They had eight squash teams of five players in the team. You know, and that's, that's not even one of the bigger schools. So it just shows you we are far behind, but our numbers, I guess, just don't allow it at this stage. Yes. Uh, so still room for development. We see there Ashraf and Lambert still warming up. And uh, yes, uh, that's a toss now. We'll see who gets... Uh, the service to start the match with. Uh, just if you're new to squash, the squash, sorry, they're playing five sets like your scoreboard shows, and it's best of 11 points. So, uh, but if it's 10 each, obviously they continue playing, and you must win with two points. Win by two points, that's correct. So, those are the rules. I will try in between to uh, tell people a bit of the history of squash is I think it's also a good opportunity Stephen for us to through a broadcast educate people and get them interested in a sport 100 percent 100 percent um yeah just looking at I'm guessing Audrey Lumbert won the toss there so she'll be serving first I see she's serving from the left hand side so I guess that means that Miriam is a left hand player so just for the viewers, while we're getting started, obviously the most important thing is on the service, you serve inside the block that Audrey's standing in. Um, the ball has to hit the wall above the middle line and then bounce into the block where Miriam is standing in there. And then from there, it's basically whoever wins the point from there. And we are so one love. That shot that Audrey played there is one of her signature shots. I call that a boast where she hits it off the side wall. Very well known for playing that. Quite a tricky shot at times. Yes, it's a very fast uh, One sport. All. I read up that people can uh, have up to 30 exchanges of the ball in a, in a single Two point. Ones. I've, I've seen it happen even more than that before. Um, you know, it, it, they, can, they, they can become, they can get long rallies. I mean, you see the pros playing 20, 30, 40, 50 shots each. And a rally can go on for four or five minutes. Um, as we see Miriam playing a great length, nice wide ball there, showing her, her professionalism and a level of squash that she's got there. Um, yeah, squash, I mean, Forbes magazine rates squash as the healthiest sport in the world. Yeah, and, um, it's, uh, and it's for a reason, you know, they, it's, it's, you do a lot of running, you do, it's a lot of acceleration, a lot of lunges, a lot of changing of direction, up and down, uh, squatting, um, you know, it's, it's, you do a little bit of everything. So I see uh, at this stage it looks like Miriam's running away with this. Hitting great lengths and Audrey's unable to chase them down from her where she's standing. So score is already 5-1 in the favor of Ashraf. We are in the first set here in this uh, match. Yes, and the scoring is also fast and furious maybe to people that's not used to the game. Uh, so <laughs> you must keep a close eye on the action. I think if we... If we look at this game now, obviously when the first rounds take place, the top players generally get drawn against the lower ranked players. Um, Miriam is obviously one of the highest ranked players in the tournament, and that's why she's already got a 9-1 lead. Um, <laughs> match has only been on for two minutes. But once, they, once the top players start playing against each other, you'll start seeing the rallies take longer, and there's a lot more skill involved. Um, you see Audrey's at, at a stage of her career where she hits the ball and... And, and, and she's just watching the ball. She's not getting back to the tee in time. The tee being in the middle, you'll see Miriam, as soon as she hits the ball, that's game for Audrey, 11, I mean, sorry, for Miriam at 11-1. And that's a problem that, that Audrey has. 11-1 first set. So yeah, that's yeah. a, but that's a big you, margin already. Exactly. And as you could see there, Audrey hits the ball and stands and watches, whereas Miriam hits the ball and she gets back to the middle. We call it the tee very quickly, and she does that very well. And that just shows the difference in level between the foreigners and the Namibians. Now that's crucial to get back to the center of uh, the court to play further. 
And uh, I think some of you might be um, catching your breath. We're going to take a short advertising break and then we'll be back with the second set. Here we go, one and just add, add here. Just add, yeah. One, 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 one. Yeah, add two, yeah, until you get to 11, yeah. Back with action, a second set here between Ashraf of Egypt and Lambert of Namibia. Comfortable win there, first set for the Egyptian, 11-1. And uh, do you, yeah, do you see the tables changing at all in the rest of this match? As much as I'd love to, uh, unfortunately I don't. Um, you could see the the level of squash that Miriam Ashraful has compared to Audrey. And it's just, it's just one. worlds apart. She's getting to everything. She's hitting it cleanly. Her movement is fantastic, and you can see she's she's placing her balls with minimum effort. And you know, it looks like it's just a feeding session. She's just practicing for the next match at the moment. Um, but let's see. Maybe Audrey can pull something off. Yeah, but I think I think still adds off to to Audrey Lambert. I mean, even though. Um, you, you're getting older in a sport. It's important still competing, still showing other Namibian women that you can play the game. Exactly. And, and Audrey, Audrey's been playing this game for a long time and she's, she's become a, a role model to a lot of youngsters in Namibia. Um, like I say, she has represented the country in numerous tournaments across the world. Um, it's obviously age holds back for no one or waits for no one. Um, so she is getting a bit yeah, older, but I think uh, she still has a lot to offer towards the Nubian squash. So Steven's score here at the moment is 6-3. Uh, still in the favor of Ashraf, second set. 7-3 nice. now, Very another nice. point added. So Ashraf has clearly picked up that Audrey's not chasing the tough balls to get, so uh, you'll see she's playing very good drop shots. Okay, that was a great shot there from Audrey, so she is pulling it back a little bit there. Um, but as soon as Audrey plays a loose ball, Ashraful is just putting it back down at the front end or playing it around Audrey and she knows Audrey won't go for them. So at the moment it's pretty much one-way traffic, two, three shots a rally, um, not too much pressure on Miriam Ashraful at the moment. Okay. Once apart, again, apart from a fault in Miriam service, uh, basically okay. obstruction okay. I think is the, the biggest uh, contravention of the rules in squash. Or not. <laughs> I'm yeah. a bit of a novice. <laughs> so, um, you get you get lots of different kinds of, of, of mistakes on the squash court. I see it was 11-4 there to, to Miriam at the end of that game. 11-4. Yeah, so yeah. the match has been the match has taken place it's seven minutes so far and Miriam's already two love up. Um, so, yeah, but let's see. Maybe, maybe Audrey can, uh, can give us a little bit of entertainment for the last set there. But yeah, with regards to the service, obviously, you definitely don't want to be making mistakes off the serve. Um, that's, that's seen as a real amateur mistake. But uh uh, Okay, we're going to take a short uh, rest again and we'll take a shorter one so that we back in time for the third set muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best Norflex gel. it also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline Norflex gel. 
or miss those precious moments that matter the most? Norflex gel. Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex Gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex Gel. And we're back with the action here from the wondrous squash court in Vantuk. And the third set has already started now. Ashraf again wins this one, which he's been doing quite comfortably from the start. It will be set and match. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Audrey's last chance to, to give it a go. But I mean, she can also use this experience for the next round. Because obviously, like I said earlier, if you lose your first game in the PSA, you do fall back into the A division. So she'll then at least be able to play in the ladies' A draw. And hopefully she learns something from this match and can take it into look, the other five matches for the rest of the tournament. So apart from the pro level in uh, the open year, we have the men's A and B uh, competitions and the ladies A. So various competitions and Saturday, uh, the champions will be determined, Stephen. I'm looking, I'm so looking forward to, to the big matches on Saturday. Um, we've got... We've got players ranked within the top 100 in the world from Egypt, from Nigeria, from Kenya, from South Africa. Uh, we did have a couple of French and Sri Lankan entries as well, but I think, I think time was a problem for their visas uh, with regards to getting to Namibia. But uh, at least now we know the interest is across the world now. And uh, I had a chat with the guys from BDO yesterday and they've, they've already started communicating to BDO Global to get contributions from their side which should mean we'd be able to attract or increase the prize money and attract players from more corners of the world so you know if we can get some people from England from America Australia all that kind of stuff that's that's really what attracts people to the sport um, and obviously sponsors you know BDO is already really happy with this but because of what they're getting from this they really want to grow with next year's event as well so uh, let's hope for the best uh, just a point or two ago, I want to ask you, Stephen, because maybe some of the viewers new to the sport also might wonder. So uh, Ashraf played a drop shot using the wall. Uh, Lambert wanted to come for the ball, but she was standing in front of her. Obviously, no clear obstruction. So, so it's your job to get around the opponent. Is that the way yeah, so, it works? Um, Normally, I would have actually expected, Audrey, see, if you saw there, she held a shot. Um, the ref gave a stroke there, which is the right call, because Ashraful was in front of her and obstructing her from hitting the ball to the front wall. Um, in the case previously, Audrey didn't even ask for the let, because you know, if, you, if, 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 your players, if your opponent's in the way and you still can't get to the ball, then the ref isn't going to give you a let, and a let means you replay the point, and a stroke means it's your opponent's point. So Audrey got a stroke there because her opponent was standing in a way and obstructing the front wall from her. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it does make the scoring of ref quite di of squash at least quite difficult sometimes because the amateurs don't always know the difference between a let and a stroke and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it does get a bit challenging. Um, but once you know the game, then it's, it, it becomes a bit easier. I see Miriam is running away with it now at 9-5. Oh, sorry, I've got the score wrong on the side. It looks like it's match already. So it must be 11 5 then already. 11 5, third set, and it's uh, all done and over. Winning the first match we're bringing you live is then Miriam Ashraf from Egypt in three sets straight against Adri Lambert from Namibia. And we've got three matches left for you. Uh, this afternoon and how it works obviously uh, depending on the speed of play matches can actually finish quite early I don't know if you if you had your stopwatch on but I think this was maybe 15 minutes in total for the entire match yeah so generally when it's a when it's a real mismatch like this match was um, and that's often the matches the f in the first round of a tournament, when the strongest players meet the weaker players. Uh, then those matches normally take around about 15, 15 minutes. 
But when, the, when it's like against like, pro against pro, number one against number one, then those matches can take more than an hour. So, yeah, I think, I think on Saturday we're going to see matches that can go 45 minutes plus very oh. easily, especially with the men. Yeah, the men tend to have mm. long, very competitive rallies. Uh, so with this tournament, we will also see an early start uh, after a match that's finished early because uh, following matches might take longer. So uh, what it works like, they're playing the best out of five sets. So if you've won three, obviously you've won straight uh, in three sets, that is what has happened in our first match. And uh, up next, up next for our viewers, we're going to the Men's Professional Squash Association division in the Namibian Open, BDO Namibian Open. And it will be Leigu van der uh, against Damien Groenewald. Groenewald is from uh, South Africa and van der from Namibia. Do you think it'll be as tough a battle as in the previous match or a bit closer, Steven? It, it will definitely be closer. Um, Lihu, Lihu's a youngster who, I don't know, I think he's about 26 years old. Um, he was in South Africa for a long time. He played a bit of Premier League squash in Cape Town for a while. Um, but he's a very, very fit player, very strong player. Um, he started playing squash in Namibia this year for the first time in... I would say 10 years and he started the year off ranked at number 46 in the country and he's worked his way up to number five in Namibia. Uh, he's done very well, he's played a couple of finals, he toured with the Namibian team to the South African country districts in, in uh, Van der Bell Park earlier this year and then also went to the bigger tournament, the Interprovincial Cup in, Johann in Pretoria at least. Uh, I was also part of that team and he was the number three seeded player in our team and he did really well. I mean, he, he won, I think, half of his matches but he got exposed to some great squash. Be that, it, be that as it may, Damien Grunewald is part of the South African team and I think he's at this stage number four or five in South Africa. Um, I got to watch him a few times in SA and wow, at, for, a, for a boy that's 19 years old, he's got a big, big, big future in front of him. He's got the world's worth of talent. Um, the shots that he can play are, are fantastic. I think he played against Diovo von Nikker, who is the South African number one. And he's the only South African in the last year or two that's managed to take a game off Diervold. So, Damon is an is a, is a up-and-coming prodigy of South African squash. He's also been selected for the South African World team to go to New Zealand later this year. Um, but yeah, his technique, he's got a great flick and hold, which I've only seen one or two South African players that can do that. And I remember Michael Wood used to be excellent at that. Um, Ron Willefier is very good at that. Uh, but Damien has got a, he's got some very good unpredictable shots, which um, they're gonna, he's going to keep Lihu very busy, that's for sure. But Lihu will keep him busy. But it's, it's a tall ask for Lihu to, to take on a guy with uh, Damien's caliber. I won't, I, won't, I won't lie to you. So the warm-up has uh, started for the next clash. And uh, just an interesting fact, if you didn't know it, uh, more than 2 million people globally play squash in more than 185 countries and uh, Stephen uh, I think I, I, I've read now that once again uh, squash didn't get the green light as a sport for the 2024 uh, Olympic Games and I saw also a lot of criticism once again against that decision because it was a, a sort of a trial sport I mean in 2018 but still, they haven't been allowed into the, the top level uh, of sport. One of the top levels, at least. What, what's your reaction to, to that? Well, what you're saying to me now is news. I, I hadn't heard that yet. Um, I know there was, it was on the go. I didn't realize that they made the decision already. But uh, that's, uh, that's already got my blood boiling, if I can quite say that. Because, you know, you've got sports like breakdancing and skateboarding. And, and I don't want to upset other people about their sports, but squash is a global sport and it's rated as the healthiest sport in the world, but we can't get into the Olympics. Uh, squash had a go in the Commonwealth Games a few years ago and actually did really well. It was very successful. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the, what the backlash is, why they wouldn't put sport in a, squash, a, a sport like squash in the Olympics. And I think anyone that's involved in squash will be very upset with, with that news. So... 
Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's mind-boggling. Well, let me say I, I read it a short while ago this afternoon. So maybe while we're waiting, you can Google it as well. It's sometimes it's, it might be fake news. Let's hope it's fake news. But I also saw that reaction again about skateboarding and other codes getting yeah. the nod for the Olympic um, Games. There's some of the spectators here at the one squash courts in Vintuk. Four courts we have here sponsored by Vision Sunlam BDO and Pupkovitz. We're bringing you the action as you can see there on screen from uh, the BDO court is the Namibian Open 2023 and uh, just if you are wondering how much a squash ball weighs so I'm trying to educate people Stephen <laughs> so excuse me if I'm sharing basics uh, squash ball weighs 23 to 25 grams uh, I believe I read up trying to educate myself and you're uh, educating me while you're doing it don't worry <laughs> <laughs> and the court you see there is in length so that's from back as you're back to your front on screen 9.75 meters the width from left to right 6.4 meters and then uh, the height of that line you see the outline is 5.64 meters I think another great thing about squash is it's a sport for everyone. Um, our youngest participant in this tournament is 11 years old. Sure. Our oldest participant in this tournament is 74 years old. Um, Uncle Tini, the 74-year-old, he's had a double knee replacement, but he can still play in tournaments like this. So, you know, it's, it's a sport for anyone. Your children can play it. It's a family sport. Um, I used to be very involved with cricket. Um, I played it for many years. I represented Wondrous for, for, 20 year, for 15 years. Um, I played quite a high level as well. So I, I really enjoyed my cricket. And one day in the off-season, my wife-to-be and I decided, let's play a bit of squash in the off-season. She loved it. I loved it. I married a German. She doesn't understand <laughs> cricket, so she didn't enjoy the fact that I was spending every Saturday on the cricket field. Um, but squash was perfect because we could play it together on any Saturday, any time of the day, lunchtime, morning time, evening, it worked for both of us. And um, if we didn't play, we didn't play. If we, it's not like we got into trouble for missing a practice. And you know, now it's a sport we love, our children love it. You know, so it's a, very gr it's a very good family sport, very healthy sport, and you can play it whenever you want. So it's a very flexible game. And um, you'll see a lot of squash players whose parents were players or a lot of people whose parents were players generally become squash players because it's, you know, you grow up next to the squash court. So, you know, for anyone listening that's wondering what's going on here, come and give it a go. And I think you'll, you'll understand why we love it. The squash community is fantastic. You play your game for 45 minutes to an hour. And, you know, at Yard Wonders, we've got a, a really cool bar with ice cold beer. So come and enjoy a beer after your game. And, you know, that's the way it should be. Uh, yes, like uh, after the tennis match uh, and in other sports, a uh, nice uh, cold golden one. Uh, you're listening to Stephen Berry to with, together with me on NTV and I, I must concur with you. It's something you and a partner can do together and you and a family because you can also play doubles, exactly. uh, obviously. And I, I must also uh, say that uh, way back when yeah, in my later years in high school when I played squash, it was also to play together with a girl. So uh, maybe that's why I didn't stay in the sport because I lost the girl. <laughs> but uh, that's just a, a bit of uh, humor. If you just tuned in, we're waiting for the start of the next match. And this is the Namibian Open. That's a professional squash association division of this competition, Leigu van Rooyen, to play Damien Groenewald. The latter from South Africa. And there you can see the South African flag of the Rainbow Nation. There on the, the shirt, the back of his shirt of uh, Groenewald. Five sets, best out of five. Playing up to 11 points. And yes, Stephen, I really hope, you know, we, we're going to see some close sets in, in this uh, match. I think so. Um Look, the money is on Damien to win three love. Um, but knowing Leigh, he's such a fighter and he's, he's a good athlete. 
Um, he really puts everything into it. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident Lijuku's gonna sh gonna entertain the crowd and uh, show us a good level of squash and, and the amount of talent that he really has. Guys, the match will only start after the BDO Namibia National Open in squash playing, and uh, I don't know if you knew this, Stephen. There was a squash court on the Titanic. That's according to Google in the first class section of uh, that famous, maybe now infamous ship. And I suppose other, you know, passenger liners will also have uh, squash courts. Very shortly, what's the difference between racquetball, which we often say see the Americans playing, and squash? So, racquetball's rackets are about half the length of a squash racket, and their ball is about the size of a tennis ball. Um, the ball on racquetball bounces a lot more, so it's it's. I've tried it yet, Wanderers, once or twice. Um, it's actually, it's, it's a frustratingly fun sport mm. because the ball bounces so much, no matter how you, you know, well, I guess I would play it at an amateur level with regards to Namibian or, or professional standards, but the ball bounces so much, it's very difficult to win the point. Um, and, well, for me, I kept here overhitting the ball and it goes over the back glass and that kind of stuff, where the squash ball doesn't bounce as much. So I, I feel you get a lot more value for your points uh, and your shots in, on, a, on a squash game of squash. Um, but each to their own, I think a lot of people do play it. It's, I think there are a couple of places that play it in South Africa. I, I met the guy that, I think he runs the sport in Gauteng. He, uh, he was the guy that actually brought it here and, and introduced us to it. But I don't know if it's a sport that would take off in Vintuk. Yeah. With our heat and altitude, yeah. I think you'd be running for days. And uh, <laughs> I think it would be very tiring for the boys. But look, squash is good because you've got to work so hard to get to the ball, um, you know, and when, when the ball warms up the squash, it yeah. also starts bouncing more yeah. and more as well. So, no, that's why you get a an orange dot ball for high altitude in squash. Players, I suppose, in Ventuk is playing with a double yellow dot. Uh, uh, no, ball. actually, the orange dot. I don't know if anyone uses that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we used the double dot for a while, and I would. Uh, I'm speaking under correction, but I think it's about five years ago. Uh, we moved over to the blue dot ball, which is the altitude. Well, it's, it's a sort of a turquoise color, and that's the high altitude ball um, because the double dot ball just bounces too much here. Then we could basically play racquetball, you know. It's, it's just, I think in winter time, the lower league men players and the ladies play with a double dot. The men play with a high altitude throughout the year because it just, the, the double dot just bounces too much for us. Uh, if we went to Pretoria in, in, uh, in June for the Interprovincial Cup, they also played with a, with a high altitude blue dot ball in uh, in June. So, yeah, it's it's once the ball warms up, it starts bouncing fine enough. But I think the lower level players probably struggle to warm it up as much as the stronger players do. Van Rooyen and Grunewald still warming up for their match. The official start time is 22:05. So maybe they are going to stick to the official times here. So basically, um, what happens with the warm up? Um, you start each player selects a side and you get you get two and a half minutes on each side. So it's a five minute warm up, two, two minutes 30 seconds on the back end, two minutes 30 seconds on the forehand. So the ref had obviously told him, right, your two and a half minutes are up. Um, now you've got to swap. So, but I think it maybe just feels a bit longer because Lihu was, he was warming up for quite a while before Damien got to the court, so. Now that's Stephen Berry, the voice you are listening to. He knows his squash. You can clearly hear um, uh, that. Just a question again about racquetball. Is the court exactly the same size than squash? I think the court's the same size. Um, I'm not too much of a... I don't know too much about it, but I think the, the, the dimensions are different. I must check it out. I can't quite remember the what the layout is and the markings are on the, on the racquetball court. But I think the... You know, the serving block is a bit different and, and the serving lines on the front wall are a little bit different. But other than that, I think the dimensions of the actual court are the same. 
I think if you've got a bit of ball sense um, and uh, and eye coordination, this is also a nice way to 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 get fit. I believe because I can tell you, I'm not a guy that uh, likes to run ten kilometers no. to get some training in. Funny enough, I always tell my brother. My brother was always the long distance athlete at school, and I was always the sprinter. And I always tell him I don't like riding bike. He's a, he does these marathons and bicycle rides and all that kind of stuff. I always did the 100 meters. Um, I, told, I always tell him I'd, I've never had the endurance. Yet I was a cricket player, which kind of contradicts myself. But um, squash is cool because, you know, you got your quick sprints and your fast runs and all that kind of stuff. Then you get your short break when you get ready for the next rally. Um, and it's always entertaining. You can have a quick chat with your opponent or your partner. You can swear at the ref every now and again as a joke <laughs> don't do that kids if you're listening <laughs> but um, you know it's, it's, it's a fun sport you, it's a lot more sociable than, than a lot of other sports um, and if you like these high intensity uh, uh, high impact kind of sports not physically impact but mentally mentally impact um, squash is a great game for you and it's, 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 it's like a game of chess you're just running a lot more you know you've got to outthink your partner or your opponent um, you know, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure your opponent runs more than you do. You know, if you can tire him out or her, if, especially if you're at a similar level, then you're generally going to have the upper hand in the tournament or in the match at least. We've seen the toss there now. So the guys just going out of court. They'll come back ready for the first serve. If you just tuned in, previous match, also professional level, Mariam Ashraf of Egypt won Namibia's Adri Lambert in three straight sets this is the second one for the day we're bringing two matches right after this uh, again ladies Mena Walt also from Egypt against Danae van Sale former Namibian playing for South Africa now and after that Max Injala will play Kenda Temitope from Nigeria Injala is Namibia's number one at the moment Max has been our number one for the last five or six years. Um, and then uh, the, the Nigerian gentleman that he'll be playing against is also the number one from Nigeria. So it should be a very big match. We, we're really looking forward to that. But his opponent, Kehinda Samuel, has been playing um, PSA squash for many years now. I was actually having a chat to him the other day. And that just shows you how far behind we are. This is the first time we've ever been exposed to a PSA tournament in Namibia. Whereas these guys from Nigeria play 15 PSA tournaments per year. Sure. So that's more than one a month. Mm -hmm. And we've never been exposed to that. So, you know, hopefully this is the first stepping stone for us Namibians, um, you know, in the way forward, you know, to just improve and increase our level and standards of squash. So, uh, yeah, there are a few jun juniors taking part. I really hope that they learn from this and get involved and, you know, start realizing what it's going to take and what they need to do to become the best. Um, because it's, it's, it's not going to fall in your lap. You've got to work really hard. These guys, these guys that are playing professionally train six to seven hours a day. You know, most mm. of us here in Namibia, as with all of our sports, rugby, cricket, you mm. know, anything else, we're amateurs. We, we're working people and we can only do it in our off time. So it does make it difficult, but we've got to make the best of what we have. So, um, you know, a big thank you to BDO for jumping on board and making sure that we can do this PSA event and expose our players to this um, and obviously just grow the sport in Namibia. So our first professional squash you're seeing in Namibia. So you're watching history being made on network television and our other platforms as well. Still waiting now for Van Rooyen and Grunewald to come back onto uh, the court here yeah. and uh, yes but uh, three days until Friday a lot of games the whole day and then Saturday uh, morning until 11 uh, is basically the, the final playoff matches and then the men's A division uh, and that will be uh, no, sorry I'm uh, wrong here yeah, one o'clock will be the men's B division final followed by the ladies A division and then the men's A division and then the ladies and men's professional squash association level uh, matches so 
if you want to rock up here, I would say, Stephen, you really want to see the best of the best, Saturday afternoon, this will be the place to be from lunchtime until about six o'clock. No, you did right, Donnie. And I think, you know, just to show you the significance of this event, on our screens at the moment, uh, we have the sitting on the third, the fourth row there is the the ambassador of Egypt who's actually made his way out here to come and support the, the players that have come here from Egypt. Um, you know, obviously, squash is Egypt's national sport. Um, but, you know, to have the ambassador here, I believe the Minister of Sport from Namibia will also be making a turn this week. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's huge for Namibian squash, but it's, I think it's huge for global squash as well. You know, it's just adding another country to, to the, the caliber of squash. And, and, you know, I mean, we have hosted with the World Juniors before. We have hosted the African uh, Championships before. But it's just been 10 years since we've been able to do something like this again. But a lot of hard work has gone into prepping for this tournament. We've, um, we've upgraded our pavilions. Before this tournament, we could only host 250 people. Now we can do 350. So 350 spectators on our pavilions. Our walls have been redone. Um, the floors have been redone. You know, so, you know, and obviously we've got this wonderful live stream that we're able to, to send out to, especially for the players from outside of Namibia. Um, I'm sure Damien's family are watching this back home and supporting him. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be great. And it's, we're really looking forward to the high level of squash that we'll be getting this weekend. You see there on your screen uh, the red, white and black there of the Egyptian flag. Obviously also a, a huge country in terms of football. Final preparations now. You're seeing in action there Damien Grunewald. From South Africa, you'll be playing Ligue van Rooyen from Namibia. And uh, Stephen, it was also important to get in qualified, certified referees for this tournament. Yeah, so it is a requirement from the PSA that your referees need to be qualified, a level two qualified ref. Um, obviously, for us to bring in qualified refs costs more money. And I think for this tournament, BDO has already sponsored 120,000. There are a couple of other sponsors involved as well, but we've, you know, the, to host this level tournament, we've already surpassed our budget by 140, by, by 40 grand. So this tournament has cost us $160,000 and we haven't even brought in a ref yet. So if we had to bring in our own refs, we'd have to pay for their flights and their accommodation. So the NSA did the simple thing and we, they just upskilled the refs we have in Namibia, which is vital because our refs in Namibia aren't qualified and up to standard. And then now we've got... I think about 15 qualified refs for this tournament. So, you know, they upskill the guys and everyone's ready and, and up to standard to, to make sure that we've got a, a good showing of squash for the next week. Uh, it's important to, to upskill at all levels. Uh, refereeing, administration, I think that goes for, for every sport. Uh, of course, a big one in the rugby. Tomorrow evening, France plays Namibia. But we're not going to talk a lot of rugby. Just one question, Stephen. Who will win, the Springboks of South Africa or Ireland on Saturday? I'm caught in two minds right now, hey, because my Super Brew pick was for South Africa. And now that they've done the, gone with a 7-1 split, I'm not sure. I'm so worried that we have an injured fullback or something and we've got no backup now. So I think if, if the game goes well without injuries, I'm, I'll back South Africa. But if we get an early injury and our fullback gets injured, Damien Villets gets injured or something like that, we might be in trouble. Although Kwaka Smith can fall in and play center and Faf de Klerk can play fly-off, um, Willemse can move up to center, fly-off as well. So we do have a very um, multi-skilled back line. But uh, I don't know. Um, I think I'm still going to back South Africa by three or four points. Uh, three, three or four, Stephen Berry says. I'll uh, be dead honest for the guys playing Super Brew. If you want to, to follow my lead, I say the box by two points. But we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, in picture, you see there on the left is the Namibian player, Leigu van Rooyen. To his right is the South African Damien Groenewald. And we're off with action. Uh, no, not the... Not the first service there yet. Is it? You can immediately see the, the difference in level here between these two players. They're immediately playing at a much better length, looking, looking towards getting the ball, hitting the back glass wall, 
putting the part, their opponent under pressure and obviously making it easier for themselves to get back to the tee in the middle and get into a position to return the ball. As you can see, the Lehu played a, a loose shot there and he wasn't able to get to the tee and dominate the tee and Damien was able to put it away. And Lehu then had to try and get around Damien to get the ball, which obviously he wasn't able to do. So Grunewald leading 2-1 here in the first set now. Let's see to whom the next point goes there. And he's chasing, uh, he's chasing the ball quite hard here, Van Rooyen. That ball just going out of court there on top. Uh, you can see uh, Damon's already putting Liuchu under a lot of pressure with some good length, tight balls, um, forcing Liuchu Van Rooyen to all four corners of the court. And that shot that he just played now is a signature Damon Grunewald shot. That hold and delay and then he flicks it and you don't know which way he's going to hit the ball. You Four. saw you yeah. saw Liuchu yeah. running towards the forehand corner there. Um, and then Damien just holding it long enough, seeing where he's going, and then putting it in the other direction. So it was 4-1 uh, already before that point. And it's 5-1 now. 5-1 in favor of Grunewald. Oh, Liuchu missing out there. Damien playing one rare loose shot. Liuchu had the chance to put that one away, but he hits it into the tin, and that's uh, that's quite unfortunate there from his side. Getting a good rally going now, these two players. Playing professional here at the BDO Namibian Open Champs for 2023. This goes back to what I was saying a bit earlier about uh, where the squash becomes a bit of a cat and mouse game, um, sort of like chess. You just got to see what your opponent's doing, how he plays. Um, Damien Grunewald takes a lead to 7 1 there with that point. Both players are trying to keep it patient, chase their opponents around, and that's what, it's a great shot there by Liuchu. He held it and he sent Damien Grunewald going the wrong direction, and he manages to get his seven, second point. And the score now 2 7 to Damien Grunewald. Right, it's, uh, it's good to see the Namibian. Van Rooyen also getting some points on the board. So there Damien did a, something very different there where in the previous one he held and delayed and then played a great cross court, sending Liuchu to the, to the forehand. This time Liuchu went to the backhand and he played a nice early drive straight down the forehand. It was a great shot there from Damien Grunewald as he moves up to 9-2. He's 9-2 uh, now, the lead in the first set here yeah, for South Africa's Damien Grunewald. Let's see if he can follow it up again. Playing long towards the back. Liuchu coming up with one of his own there. Held it very nicely. Um, Damien played a bit of a loose shot there and Liuchu held it. Damien wasn't sure where to go and Liuchu played a nice flat wide cross court. Third point there on the board now for Van Rooyen. It's 9-3, the lead. Game ball, 10-3. And that takes it to game ball. 10-3 up for Damien. If Grunewald hits this, uh, scores the next point, uh, or gets one more point, he wins the first game. Very good post shot there and good counter drop from Liuchu. Oh, great cross court there from Damien. And that takes it to game point for Damien. He takes the game 11 points to 3. So that was the first set in this uh, match. And uh, yes, we're going to take a very, very short break. Coming uh, back to you in the second set straight after this. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex Gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex Gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex Gel. Norflex Gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex Gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex Gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex Gel. The next days are not a measurement of time. 
but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future, not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. Back here with the second set. If we just tuned in, the first set went to Damien Grunewald. 11-3 from South Africa is playing. Namibia's Lihu van Rooyen. And uh, Steven, let's see if uh, Van Rooyen can put up more of a fight here in the second set. You can see there, uh, Damien's... Davin's using his experience. I mean, he plays so many tournaments every year. Um, he knows exactly where the ball's going and what to do and, and where to move Lihu around. Um, you see they're sending Lihu the wrong way again. But the most important thing for both guys, just whoever does the basics the best, you know, will we'll take it in the end. And, and Damien's basics have just been perfect. He hasn't, he hasn't put a foot wrong. I think he had one turn in the first game. Otherwise... Um, you know, he's, he's just been playing the very good, very basic game. No mistakes. Keep it simple, stupid. And the points coming thick and fast already here. 2-1 two, two. now. So uh, that is Van Wijn pulling back a point there. But uh, the one point ahead still Groenewald now. Uh, Liefel getting it a bit short there. He wants to be finding enough, getting his length a little bit deeper. A slightly better shot. There we go. It's a great shot there from Damon. That's where you'll be playing your game. Get your opponent to the back and then you send him forward and make him move as far as across the court as possible. Damon hits the nick there. The, the advantage on the court that they're playing is the nicks are pretty big. So you're, 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 you've got a lot more opportunities to get the nick. And when I talk about the nick, I'm talking about when the ball bounces in the corner and rolls out. It doesn't come out. Um, and that's exactly what Damien did there and his serve was also a great one, very tight one might not have been a nick but when it sticks to the glass like glue it becomes very difficult to get it out 4-1 the lead now from Grunewald here yeah. 3 points, that is that what moves the score up to 5-1 for Damien with that turn from, from Lihu much better length he just needs to keep it there see he's put Damien under a bit of pressure there and he's able to capitalise but you see, that's where Damien's experience comes in. Once he plays a bad shot, he gets himself back into it, just plays a basic shot, play yourself back into the rally, and he's able to finish off with a fantastic drop over there. Saving lead, Damien. There's lovely Saving squash lead. you're seeing here. Yeah, top class, that's why they are Score competing in professional levels. 6 1 now. So it's five points that Van Rijn is chasing. And there he goes Rijn again. Rijn. Puts the ball straight into the nick. Ball rolls out. Van Rooyen has no chance. See, that was a loose ball from Lihu. Ball goes down the tee instead of the against the wall. And Damien has, he's under no pressure. He's got all the space in the world just to put it wherever he wants. there sending Liu for the third time in this rally in the wrong direction but I think Van Rooyen doing well there not getting it did well but as you say that he plays a short ball and Damien manages to play a great cross court into the nick and he's up 9-1 oh loose return 10-1 and it's game ball to Damien this has been a very quick game it's not even three minutes already Oh, and, and Damien can make mistakes. He is human, guys. Nikhu gets his second point, 2-10. Game ball to, to Damien Kunewald. And he just hits the nick again. Game. That's game to Damien, 11-2. 11-2, so he can make it uh, straight sets, three sets to zero. Kunewald in Van Rooyen. The players will have a short rest now. Just a chance to catch their breaths. 
uh, before they come back. And uh, maybe just another question for you about the game and maybe for, for viewers out there as uh, well. Okay, you've talk, spoken about the fitness and uh, how fast it is. Do you get less injuries in squash? Then, I mean, you played cricket. I don't know if you were a bowler, because that's, for example, very tough on your knee joints yeah. and uh, your hamstrings, yeah. also your ankles. It's a, it's a very good question, very interesting question. So, most of the squash injuries that I come across are from beginner level players. If you know how to move and play on the squash court, um, you, you don't see that many injuries. Obviously, you know, when, when you get, if Damien's playing against a JP Brits or a Diewald von Nikkerk or one of those guys, then the intensity lifts up by, you know, 10 times higher. You know, you'll see that later when the top Nigerian, South Africans, Egyptians start playing against each other. Um, the intensity picks up and then you, you, you go a lot harder for the ball. And that is when you can injure. But at the level that we play at, if you, if you, start, if you move correctly and you, you coach properly, you don't often see injuries, but obviously the, the beginner players, they don't know how to lunge for a ball or to stop before they hit the ball. I mean, I saw a guy break his collarbone because he just couldn't stop when he hit the ball. He just carried on running and hit the ball, you know. So that's, um, I think if you, if you learn the game properly, injuries, and obviously warming up, stretching, you know, it's very important. I was watching the Egyptians yesterday, and it's something we're all guilty of on our side anyway. These guys that play pro squash, after they had a 45-minute game of squash, they spent another 45 minutes stretching before him. You know, so, you know, if you, if you stretch and warm up properly, you can avoid these injuries and you can increase the longevity of your career. Uh, oh, that's yeah. a great pickup by David Grunewald. I almost thought Leijo had hit the winner there, but that was a great fetch and he's back into this rally. And, uh, yeah, Leijo seems to have picked up the intensity for this run. Let's see if he can carry on with this. Oh, well done, Leaf. It was actually a very good rally from both players. Scores are one all. Uh, Steven speaks about rallies. They call the, the uh, point system is actually called a point a rally scoring system in squash as well. So if you win the rally, uh, then you get the point. That's correct, yeah. So Damien won that point, and that takes his score to 2-1. So mistakes like that sometimes come in when a player relaxes, when he realizes he's quite far ahead of his opponent. Um, you know, he probably wouldn't have made it hit, hit the tin like that if he was playing against a much stronger player. Um, then you tend to relax, and then, but you can see Liuhu's face there. He doesn't know what to do. Um, I mean, that was just a phenomenal drop shot. Oh, there you go. I think Liuhu said, what you can do, I can do that one. Yeah, so it was two each, and then Grunewald pulled the eight with the one shot and now it's three all sending Liuhu the wrong way again and that's the problem if you're not going to keep it tight at this level when you play those loose shots these guys are going to finish it and put you away and that's exactly what he did he didn't get the ball close enough to the side wall and Damien could just wait and see what Liuhu was going to do and he sent him running in the wrong direction this time round for his fifth point um, he hits the ball into the nick, ball rolls out, and that's what these pros do, is they can hit these nicks on a regular basis. So the chase gets harder now, with 6-3, he's the lead now for the South African Grunewald, stretching the advantage now. Let's see if Van Rooyen can fight back. It almost seems like the Liechu Van Rooyen's given up, and uh, balls that I'm used to him chasing and fetching, picking up, um, I think he's realized he's met, he's met his match. Maybe he's just decided to save some energy because obviously if he loses this match, he goes down to the men's A division and there he's got another five matches waiting for him. And he's also part of the national team that's got to play in the, in the, in the cup next month. Or next week, sorry. So, you know, he's, he's got another three matches, four matches, three matches, sorry, coming up there. So eight matches, nine matches for him in three days uh, or in a couple of days is, is a big ask. So... Um, but let's see, Lihu's now 4-7 down. Once again, sending Lihu in the wrong way, sending him the wrong way. It's a 
down the middle and Damon's under no pressure and, and he just puts it away every time. He hasn't missed any of those opportunities today. Uh, it just shows you what a class act is and uh, what a great match, what, what a great uh, amount of excitement we can all be, you know, we, we can all be very excited about the matches that he's going to be playing later on in this tournament. 8-5, so yes, we indeed are seeing a fight back from Van Rijn here in the third uh, set. Now, Stephen, you said it's like chess. I would just very shortly like to say it's also like good music, you know. It's a fast tempo and then it's slowed down a bit and uh, that's how you uh, catch out each other. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, the, the more you can outthink your play, it's not about hitting the ball as hard as you can. Think about where your opponent is. Think about how tired your opponent is. Um, you know, when he's tired, you don't necessarily need to speed it up. Because if you slow it down and make sure he's able to fetch the ball, then he'll go for it and keep going for it and keep going for it and just wear his legs out more and more and more. And with that point, um, Damien Grunewald takes the match 11-5, um, wins the match 3-love, 11-3, 11-2, and the fifth set, the, sorry, the third set, 11-5. That match took um, probably just about 20 minutes. So the first two matches here, first one, uh, both of them won in straight sets. Uh, Ashraf from Egypt beating Namibia's Lambert. That was in the ladies' professional uh, division of this competition. And now it's Grunewald from South Africa beating Van Rooyen, also in straight sets. And up next, uh, it'll probably be a little bit wild due to the warm-up. Up next will be again a ladies' match. Mena uh, Valit against Denae van Sale, the youngster only 16 years old we'll be back in a short while to bring you the third match here live on NTV NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care we keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pahamba Private Hospital corner of Frankie Fredericks and Ombika Street, Climate Cooper, Ventuk. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. 
It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss Nor those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future. Not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. Okay, um, thanks Brian. It is wonderful to see this many people here. Um, it's a big crowd and for us it's a great honor to have the first ever PSA tournament in Namibia. I mean, it's a huge, huge tournament. We have uh, the likes of the wonderful teams that we all know all the way from Egypt. How stiff or how tight do you see the competition that we have going on here today based off the players that came in? Well, it's, it's anyone's game. Um, the one, the, our number one seed on the ladies' side won the Joburg Open last week. So she's fresh from, from a good win there. Um, on the men's side, there's a lot of stiff competition. A lot of the guys have played each other, but there's a lot of unknown factors as well. Okay, like, like you just said, the number one ranked, she is here. Um, how good is it for, for Namibia to, have, to, to be exposed to uh, athletes of that caliber? Like, I mean, number one, it's not easy to be in that sport and to be here around Namibians. How good is it for us? For us, this is huge. For, for the Namibian squash, um, this is something we've dreamed of literally since independence to, to have a professional tournament in Namibia. And finally, it's come too. So it's, it's really huge. It's going to be big for our squash players, for our own players, and for the development of the game in total. Well, the Egypt ambassador of Namibia is here with us. Um, just tell us, how long are we going to be here for, for the viewers that are watching from home? Uh, where can they come tune in and all of that? Well, we'll be live on, on air until Saturday evening when the finals will be. Uh, for those who want to come and watch in person, it's at Wanderers in, in Pioneers Park. Uh, there will be squash every morning from at least six or, uh, 7 or 8 in the morning uh, up until, uh, I think, Friday night until 8, Saturday until about 6 o'clock. But brilliant squash, brilliant action, and love to see everyone here. Brilliant squash, brilliant action. We'd love to see everyone here. Well, that's the word from the Vice President himself. Do stay tuned. There's more squash coming your way. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. 
Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. Okay, well, we are joined by Van Royen. Van Royen, a match, a uh, well match played against Grunewald. Just tell me, how tough was that match in, uh, against someone who's in the top five in South Africa? Well, you know, um, it was a really tough game. You know, the, the skill level of the South Africans and all of the international players here during this tournament is unmatched. You know, um, these guys have awesome exposure to play against international opponents. Um, and it's been, it's a real treat and it's an eye-opener as to what levels can be achieved in squash. But nonetheless, I gave it my best. Felt it was a good game, got a good sweat going. Um, and then, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the matches to the tournament. Well, we, we could see everyone enjoyed the match. We could hear the standing ovation that came from the match. But just, uh, it's our first PSA. It's, a first, it's our first huge uh, sports event in, in squash. Uh, how important is it, do you think, for us to have events like this in Namibia? I mean, with the likes of the first uh, ranked lady, I heard she's here, uh, and all of that exposure for Namibia, how good is it? Well, you know, Namibia can't get enough of this kind of squash, you know. Um, it's the first PSA Professional Squash Association tournament that we are hosting here, sanctioned by the PSA. It's a, it's a phenomenal achievement to have this, the, the body of squash, of world squash, um, come and host tournaments, attract international players. I mean, majority of the draw is made up of international players, not even local Namibians, you know. So it just shows you the strength that, that the squash has, the, br the brand has all over the world. You yourself, I'm sure you still have a few matches left, but just run me through it. How tough is it to play against these international guys or the guys from South Africa? Well, to give you a little bit of perspective, the South African Squash Association hosts about 150 tournaments a year. The Namibian Squash Association hosts 10. So in any given time in South Africa, there's three tournaments happening over a weekend. So the amount of game time, you can see the way they perform on court. They just have much more game time and much more court exposure against a much bigger variety of squash players. In Namibia, we have a top 10 that's, you know, that's unbeaten. Everybody can beat anybody in the top 10, and that's the players that we have to play against here locally. So it is absolutely important to have these international tournaments here, but even having Namibians travel to go play international tournaments somewhere else. Okay, well, and Ryan, thank you for your time, uh, and good luck with the next game. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Well, you guys should stay tuned. We still have a few more interviews coming your way. NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care. We keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pahamba Private Hospital, corner of Frankie Fredericks and Ombika Street, Kleiner Cooper, Ventuk.
The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future, not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex Gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex Gel. Or miss Nor those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex Gel. Norflex Gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex Gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex Gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex Gel. NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care. We keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pohamba Private Hospital, corner of Frankie Fredericks and Umbika Street, Kleiner Cooper, Ventuk. It is wonderful to see this many people here. Um, it's a big crowd and for us it's a great honor to have the first ever PSA tournament in Namibia. I mean, it's a huge, huge tournament. We have uh, the likes of the wonderful teams that we all know all the way from Egypt. How stiff or how tight do you see the competition that we have going on here today based off the players that came in? Well, it's, it's anyone's game. Um, the one, the, our number one seed on the ladies' side won the Joburg Open last week. So she's fresh from, from a good win there. Um, on the men's side, there's a lot of stiff competition. A lot of the guys have played each other, but there's a lot of unknown factors as well. 
like like you just said, the number one ranked she is here. Um, how good is it for for Namibia to have to to be exposed to uh, athletes of that caliber? Like I mean, number one, it's not easy to be in that sport and to be here around Namibians. How good is it for us? For us, this is huge. For for the Namibian squash, um, this is something we've dreamed of literally since independence to to have a professional tournament in Namibia, and finally it's come to. So it's it's really huge. It's going to be big for our squash players, for our own players, and for the development of the game in total. Well, the Egypt ambassador of Namibia is here with us. Um, just tell us how long are we going to be here for? For the viewers that are watching from home, uh, where can they come tune in and all of that? Well, we'll be on, live on, on air until Saturday evening when the finals will be. Uh, for those who want to come and watch in person, it's at Wanderers in, in Pioneers Park. Uh, there will be squash every morning from at least six or, uh, 7 or 8 in the morning uh, up until, uh, I think, Friday night until 8, Saturday until about 6 o'clock. But brilliant squash, brilliant action, and love to see everyone here. Brilliant squash, brilliant action. We'd love to see everyone here. Well, that's the word from the Vice President himself. Do stay tuned. There's more squash coming your way. Uh, well match played against Grunewald. Just tell me, how tough was that match in, uh, against someone who's in the top five in South Africa? Well, you know, um, it was a really tough game. You know, the, the skill level of the South Africans and all of the international players here during this tournament is unmatched. You know, um, these guys have awesome exposure to play against international opponents. Um, and it's been it's a real treat and it's an eye-opener as to what levels can be achieved in squash. But nonetheless, I gave it my best. Felt it was a good game, got a good sweat going. Um, and then, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the matches to the tournament. Well, we, we could see everyone enjoyed the match. We could hear the standing ovation that came from the match. But just, uh, it's our first PSA. It's, a first, it's our first huge uh, sports event in, in squash. Uh, how important is it, do you think, for us to have events like this in Namibia? I mean, with the likes of the first uh, ranked lady, I heard she's here, uh, and all of that exposure for Namibia, how good is it? Well, you know, Namibia can't get enough of this kind of squash, you know. Um, it's the first PSA Professional Squash Association tournament that we are hosting here, sanctioned by the PSA. It's a, it's a phenomenal achievement to have this, the, the body of squash, of world squash, um, come and host tournaments, attract international players. I mean, majority of the draw is made up of international players, not even local Namibians, you know. So it just shows you the strength that, that the squash has, the, bra the brand has all over the world. Well, you yourself, I'm sure you still have a few matches left, but just run me through it. How tough is it to play against these international guys or the guys from South Africa? Well, to give you a little bit of perspective, the South African Squash Association hosts about 150 tournaments a year. And the Namibian Squash Association hosts 10. So in any given time in South Africa, there's three tournaments happening over a weekend. So the amount of game time, you can see the way they perform on court. They just have much more game time and much more court exposure against a much bigger variety of squash players. In Namibia, we have a top 10 that's, you know, that's unbeaten. Everybody can beat anybody in the top 10, and that's the players that we have to play against here locally. So it is absolutely important to have these international tournaments here, but even having Namibians travel to go play international tournaments somewhere else. Okay, well, and Ryan, thank you for your time, uh, and good luck with the next. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. 
Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future. Not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Welcome back to the BDO Namibian Squash Open Championship for 2023. We'll shortly be bringing you another match in the professional association level of this competition. And that is the ladies Mena Valit from Egypt will be playing the Nay van Sel uh, from South Africa. She's playing for South Africa now, but she owned a skill in Namibia. And uh, yes, she was 15 years old when she became the Namibian champion. So, uh, uh, Stephen, that is quite an accomplishment, I think, for, for any young athlete. Yeah, Donny, look, she, her family moved to Namibia when she was, I think she was about 11 when they moved here, or 10 years old when they moved here. Um, her mom was a great provincial squash player back in South Africa. And her aunt, I believe, was also a top 10 or top 20 in the world at one stage. Um, so she comes from a family of great, great sporting background. Her father was a, a Transvaal rugby player and a Transvaal cricket player back in the day. Um, you know, so they, they, they come with a lot of sporting experience and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a lot of talent in the family. Uh, her younger brother was one of the best cricket players in Namibia as well when he was living. I think he was born here. 
um, or the youngest one was. So yeah, but back to Danae, she, she's really, really blossomed here. Max Njala worked really hard with her in her time in Namibia. Um, she won numerous tournaments and then last year she moved back to South Africa to start training with her aunt and a couple of other coaches and just get a lot more exposure. As we've discussed with the previous matches, you can see the difference in exposure that the South Africans and players from the bigger countries are getting compared to us here in Namibia. But uh, yeah, she, got, she came to the Namibian Open. No Namibian has ever won the Namibian Open before. Um, so I guess she's as close to it as, as we'll ever get. But she's also the youngest winner of the Namibian o Open trophy that we've ever had. And I mean, Namibian Open's been around for many years and you've, we've seen some significantly, some brilliant squash players that have taken part here. Um, but she, she does have her work cut out now. She's obviously with the PSA has attracted a lot more international players. And because of that, she's now seeded 16th in this tournament instead of number one, you know. Um, but and now she's getting a, <laughs> she's got the raw deal of playing her first match against the number one seed of the tournament. Um, so, yeah, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a tough one. But you'll see in this game, um, Danae, I think, might still be a step or two. It might be a step too far for her in this game. But uh, I think you'll see in this match that she's also a girl with a lot of potential and a great future in the game of squash ahead of her. And also, I guess, because of our pro proximity to South Africa, we, over the years, have seen a lot of South Africans coming to compete in uh, Winterk. Uh, just for the viewers, the defending Open champion in Namibia is also from South Africa in the men's competition. That's Diewald van Niekerk. Unfortunately, he cannot take part uh, this week due to other commitments. But So we're going to see a, a new champion crown in any case. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, look, Diewald, had he been here, would have probably still been the number one seed, I would expect, in the tournament. Uh, he's just an absolutely class actor. Now that he's playing his squash overseas, he's getting coached by... Um, Nick Matthews up in England, who used to be a world number one. So, Devil Squash, I think last year, this time, he was about 180 in the world. Um, he's, he's very nearly 100 in the world at the moment, if he hasn't passed that. So, um, yeah, he would have probably been number one, although the number one seed, current seed in this tournament from Egypt is also a phenomenal squash player. Um, but, yeah, we, we will, to answer your question, we'll definitely have a new winner this year. But there's a lot of competition. I mean, the, the top players from Nigeria are here. Uh, the number two seed in the tournament is Nigeria's number one, who's playing against Namibia's number one next, Max Njala. Um, we've got Kenya's number one is taking part. We've got top Zambians. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of top players from all their respective countries. Um, so, uh, look, we, we're in for some thrilling squash over the next four days. I really, really can't wait. Okay, you've seen the toss there. Our scoreboard is also up, so we're waiting for the first ball of this match to be played, Valit playing a fun sale. And before they come on, yes, uh, squash won't be at 2024's Olympic Games, but it seems they postponed the decision, Stephen, also about the 28 Olympic Games, where squash is still on the list. Uh, but uh, apparently in the recommendation, they were left out again, but there's a final decision still to be made. So I guess uh, it seems as far as I could uh, read up, <laughs> there hasn't been a final decision. So I guess all squash players are in the world are still holding, holding thumbs. And yeah, that's uh, some of the international happe happenings in this very exciting uh, sport. So yeah. like uh, we said, Danae van Sale now from South Africa playing Menava Lit. She's first ranked also for this competition. The Egyptian listed first there on our scoreboard. And we are off, Stephen. Yeah, well, I think that, that looked like a bit of a nervous start there because um, Mena Walid returned it with a very loose ball and then they hit it straight into the tin. So I think that's a bit of nerves and jitters that she needs to shake off. Um, I'm not too sure how many times she's played against a player of this caliber. But you can see her shots are clean, her shots are crisp. You know, she's definitely a step up and her squash has really improved since, since she moved down to South Africa and she's, she's grown up, she's grown stronger. And uh, you can really see there, that was 
That was really not a bad rally to start off with. Uh, that takes the score up to two love to Mena Walid. Not up. Uh, that was three love. a bit of a loose mistake by Dene. That's three love. They are at Lake to an A. Another ten. I think the jitters are getting to her because uh, Fall up. these aren't the mistakes we normally see the name making. Let's hope she can overcome them and uh, get into the game and show everyone what she's really made of. The scoreboard, like in our previous two matches that we brought to you on NTV, is ticking over very quickly. And there you could see the quality of men over lead with that shot. I mean, it wasn't a bad shot by Dene, um, but Mena Walid got there and she just showed, listen, put that right into the front corner, ball's not coming out of it, rolls out, and Dene could do out. nothing about that. So it's uh, now 6-love, six, six, 6 to nil in the favour of Walid. She needs another 5. There we go, Dene's off the mark with a great cross court. And out 1-6. I think that's like in any sport, if you can just get on the board, you can gain momentum from that, Stephen. No, 100%, 100%. And now that uh, Mena Walid's given her a few points there, um, and obviously squash is a very big momentum game. You know, once you, once you lose your momentum, it's very difficult to get it back. Uh, I've, I've had numerous games where I was up 10-3 three, three or 9-4, you know, and the momentum's with me, and all of a sudden my opponent gets that momentum back. And then it becomes a challenge, you know. So you've got to make sure you don't lose focus and you keep that momentum. Because when you lose it, it's, it's very, it can be, become very difficult to come back, especially against a, a player of Mena Walid's quality. Oh, you almost got there. It looked like that ball enough. pretty much rolled out of the corner there. Very difficult to return those balls. Great wide cross court there by Mena Walid, making sure the second bounce died in the corner there. Well, Stephen, also in this sport, your concentration must be absolute, maybe more than in many and other sport codes. Yes. I mean, you know, everything happens so quickly in a game of squash. You don't exactly have time to yes, take a water break in the middle of a game like you would in rugby eight. and, you know, reset and the captain talks to you and tells you what you're doing wrong. You know, you got to keep your own focus, and it's all up to you. Your coach can help you out in between games. But while you're on court, it's you and you alone. And if, you, if your focus isn't 100%, um, then, uh, then you're in trouble. And, and Mena Walid's running away with this at the moment. She's, she's really showing that she's the dominant player. Um, with a lot more experience, a lot more exposure to top-level squash. Nine. But Danae's not throwing away name away at this stage. I know she's 5-9 down. Um, to me, it just looks like she just needs that little bit more exposure and experience at the top level. And I think in a year or two, I mean, remember, she's, she's a, that's stroke a stroke ball, ball uh, which means she was obstructing her opponent and, and Mena Walid gets the point there and that takes the score to 10-5 game ball to Mena Walid. Now, one away, one point away from winning the first set here now, the lady from Egypt. Game to Walid. Game, game to Mena Walid. 11-5, first set goes to... Mena Walid from Egypt and uh, is one couldn't also in the first set see that really longer rallies got going yeah and again it brings me back to my point in the previous match where obviously in the first round of these tournaments that's where you see the strongest player Mena Walid is the number one seed in the tournament but I mean she's also a well known player on the world PSA circuit I'm not quite sure what the world play, ranking is we'll have really to find well. that out just now but She's a world-class player. Danae is 17 years old. She's, come, she's just basically come through the ranks in South Africa, winning junior tournaments. Um, she has been one of the top in Africa during the junior years. But, you know, this is the first time she's getting the opportunity to play against this level of players. I think she played in the, in the world's... Well, there, was a, there was a huge tournament that she played and represented South Africa in, uh, overseas somewhere a few months ago. Um, and also, she, she, she did struggle, but that's where you learn. If you don't yeah. play those matches and those tournaments, you're not going to get the exposure. So I think, you know, by the time she reaches 23, 24, I think she'll reach her peak and everyone will say, wow, this girl's brilliant. Um, 
so she's still got she's still young she's got a lot of learning to do and she will learn she's keen to learn she's you know, she, she loves learning from anyone every day. She could play against you tomorrow and learn something from you. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, but I think that will be a complete whitewash. I, I, will, <laughs> I won't even get onto court. Uh, so, second set now. It's one game to love. Uh, it's Wally about to, to get underway here in this PSA ladies playoff match. It's the first day of the BDO Namibian Open. Remember all the way until Saturday, they are planning, please come and support our Namibian players and come and view the talents of the visitors from various other countries that will be on display there. And a while ago, you saw a gentleman here on the stand with a nice big draft, so you can also come al along and get yourself a nice cold beer, if oh, that's your preference. Oh. And yes, that was almost a... Obstruction Lee. That was a stroke. They sort of ran into each other and obviously um, the ball came out of the corner of the front wall and then they couldn't really get out of the way of that. So it's, 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 it's a bit unfortunate. Um, but I think if, if I was, I saw, I saw Danae speaking to Max Njala in Namibia's number one uh, during the break there. He was her coach while she, when she still lived in Namibia, giving her a bit of advice. And I'm pretty sure he was just telling her, listen, get back to the basics, slow it down. She's, you know, there was nothing Fall difficult up. about the serve that she just received and she's hitting them into the tin. So um, I think she just needs to get her head back in it, slow it down, get her length right, and then take it from there. Because right now, there we go. That's a great and shot. Got four. her opponent behind her, stuck behind her. And uh, she put up a great shot up front there. So let's see if she can get some momentum back into this game. Now let's see if Danae van Sel can add to that one point here in the second Stroke to Ali. But uh, and out five, Stephen, one. what was also nice a while ago, I took a walk here in front of the stands. And South Africa's Damien Grunewald, we had a very good match. We were play talking to local younger players, you know, exchanging his, uh, his recipe yes. for success. And that's also an opportunity uh, wow. by having the foreign players here. Six, one. hundred percent. And I mean, that's... That's part of being a sportsman. Once you become a role model, it become, it's very important that you you respect that role. You know, you can't. No one wants you to become that world-class sportsman and become that arrogant, um, Seven, one. arrogant person. So it's always important to give back and and teach the up and coming, help them get to you know, teach them, give, share your knowledge. You know, and that's I think why so many people still rate someone oh. like a Roger Federer as the greatest sportsman I around. Two, seven. Forever because of you know, Djokovic and Nadal might have overtaken him with regards to trophies won and, and that kind of stuff. But his humbleness and, and the way he would give back um, is, always, is what stands out. And that's what he'll be remembered for, you know. So that's, that's, it's very important for sportsmen to, and women to, to, to do that kind of stuff and give back uh, when, they, when they're not on the field or on the court. Okay, Steven scoring, yes, is 8-1 currently in the favor of the Egyptian. So our scoreboard probably has that one point. So there we go. Thanks for our technical team for correcting that. Was a and much better rally two. there by Danae. Um, she kept her patience. And that's where it becomes like a game of cat and mouse or a game of chess, where you've got to show that patience. Wait for your opponent to make the mistake. Eight, two. Um, previously, her opponent was playing a loose shot, or, you know, a normal shot, nothing great. And she tried to try and be too aggressive. You know, She can just be patient. She's fit enough. She's young enough to keep up with these players. Just to keep your head and make sure the rally keeps going, you see? <coughs> and for a change, Mina Walid, you know, made the mistake. Yeah, and nine everyone's two. human, everyone will make yeah. that mistake at some stage. It's 9-2, the servers there, with Danae van Sale playing in the white and blue. Oh. Uh, Great right shot there by Danae. 4-8. Takes a score to 3-9. So, uh, right. yes, we'll just check our score with the referee and upstairs uh, to make sure we've got it correct. Let's give us a moment or two to do that. Ten four game ball. Okay. okay, then it's game ball now. Game to Walid. No, it's 
find its game anyway. Sit here. You good? Yeah. Yeah. Egypt's men are well lead in the lead with two sets. Last one, 11 6. First one, the Naif Ansel scored five points. Uh, as you said, Stephen, the rally's improving a bit. The uh, Naif got one additional point at least on uh, the board. And we'll have to see. Previously, you said, you know, it can sometimes happen that, yeah, if you're on the front foot in the third set, players start to relax a bit and often that may provide an opportunity for the player who is behind on the scoreboard to, to make some inroads and at least get a setback pull a setback yeah definitely look Miss Wally leads two games when it comes to Egyptian squash these guys are so professional in what they do um, they give you absolutely nothing Wally to serve um, level they, they've been taught from a very young age to keep it as professional as possible and not to give their opponent anything. So I can't see Mena Walid relaxing at all here. Um, I think she's going to be as ruthless as possible, sis, you know, uh, preserve her body for the upcoming matches. So if she, if she lets up and relaxes and tries to give the Naya a bit more of a, of a game, she might, she might uh, make things a bit more difficult for herself by, um, you know, fatiguing her body for the, for the rest of the tournament. So I'm sure she wants to finish this as quickly as possible as she goes into a two-love lead there. And Valid makes it look easy to play squash, which is, of course, something you can only achieve after years and hours of hard art practice. Now, a person must remember that squash is the national sport in Egypt. Um, I one, two. They've got thousands of players up there. They've got courts everywhere. Um, if you take the top 10 men in the world, Last time I checked the ranking, six of the top ten came from Egypt. And exactly the same with the women. Six of the top ten ladies come from Egypt. Um, I, I don't know if that's changed at all, but that was the last time I checked. But uh, that's the general consensus of uh, world squash. Is, is The Egyptians just dominate everything. So, Denae van Sale actually for the first time there in the lead according to the referee upstairs She's it was an exceptional drop shot there by Mena Walid she sort of knew she knew that Danae was behind her and if she wanted to fetch that drop up front in the back end corner she would have to move around her it's an extra two or three paces and on a squash court two or three paces Four, three. makes a world of difference well it's serving the getting the ball into the corner again um, oh. that uh, oh. That is definitely a was, ball for a let. I don't know no if that'll be a let. Um, Danae was following the ball, but I think the ball was already passed there, so I don't know if On she could right have actually got side. there to win the point. 5-3. Yeah, it looks like the ref said no let. And points to one winner, Mali Mena Walid, and she takes the lead to 5-3. Let's make it 6-3 there. She plays a perfect length into the six, back three. court. Ball doesn't bounce. And then they can't get behind it to, to get it back to the front wall. That's tricky when that ball falls in the corner or is it in the corner. Of course, if you're too far away, even if you're close enough, it's often impossible to, to return. 7-3. The score moves up to 7-3. Obviously, as a professional player, one, one of the things that these guys do, and we saw that with Damien today, where he was actually targeting the corners of the court. Uh, in squash Eight, terminology, three. we call that aiming for the nick. So the ball hits the nick and it rolls out, doesn't bounce. And obviously, oh, there's nothing your opponent can do about those. Um, but when you watch these guys, when we had the World Juniors here a few years ago, we watched the guys practicing, and they hit nicks at will. 
You know, you practice this day in, day out. We saw Damien doing that against Liuhu, and we saw, we've seen Meno Ali doing this a few times now as well as she moves up to 9-3. So she's three points, two points away from and winning four, the second set. But there's a point pulled back now by the knife on sale. Keeping it long. Oh, it's, it's a Five nine. Okay, it's Deneu, a nick. Deneu gets a nice opportunity there. She's serving on the left side for a change. And uh, oh. oh, you see, you could see that the moment and she I saw what the serve was doing, she wound up and she aimed for that nick, and the ball just rolled out. Brilliant, brilliant return. So it's set and match point now for Valid from Egypt. Walid wins three that games is, to love. That is all she wrote. 11 five. It's a good effort there by Dene. She got some good points there, but five. obviously Mena Walid leads apart and ultimately too strong for Dene then. Straight sets, but uh, like Stephen Berry uh, commentating with me explained, uh, these players, if they get knocked out, they can move down to the A-level competition and play further for the rest of the competition and still uh, something to compete for. 100%, 100%. So today should, should, should do quite well down in the a ladies' A division. I, I think uh, at least semi-final place for her. Um, but yeah, let's see. I'm, I'm very excited to see how the tournament goes for her. So up next, uh, before we uh, take a break, up next will be Max Njala. He's Namibia's number one and he'll be playing Keinde Temitope from Nigeria. So that'll be... Uh, a good match to, to watch the previous men's match we brought you were the 11th and 6th seeds playing each other so uh, the second seed much closer to the top so you can expect brilliant squash here at the BDO Namibian Open Championship NTV will be back with you shortly NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care. We keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pahamba Private Hospital, corner of Frankie Fredericks and Ombika Street, Kleiner Cooper, Ventuk. Well, we are joined by Mena here. Mena, just tell us quickly, um, how tough was the game today? Uh, actually, it was uh, good today. Uh I found my shots, uh, I was confident, the game, uh, she played uh, very well, but I managed to uh, play my shots and win the game. Okay, well it's your first time here maybe I think, and just tell us how you're liking it here, how's the weather uh, being so far away from home? The weather is too hot, first, uh, <laughs> and that's my first time, uh, I, I like it, so maybe it's not the, the last time. Well, um, speaking of your ranking, uh, world ranking, where do you stand right now? Uh, 103, yeah. Well, there you had it, Mena herself, but all in all, how excited are you for the tournament? First time in Namibia, you still have more games to play. Yeah, how are you enjoying yourself? Uh, I'm so excited. Uh, hopefully I can take the title. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, well, there you heard it from Mena herself, uh, ranked first at the competition. Yeah, you heard her 103rd uh, ranking that is, which is really, really high. And we have the privilege of having her here in Namibia, playing right in front of us. I'm pretty honored to just have uh, having talked to her right now. Well, that's all that I have for you now. Do stay tuned as we do try and get you more interviews. It takes heart and all the soul. 
a head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins, and then more blood, and more sweat, more tears, all your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends, six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future. Not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care. We keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pahamba Private Hospital, corner of Frankie Fredericks and Ombika Street, Kleiner Cooper, Ventuk.
The next days are not a measurement of time, but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future, not away, but towards it. For the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the... Okay, well, we are joined by Dene. Dene, say hello for Sebastian KMT and Mena. Oh, that was very nice. He's a very really good player, so I can be a little bit And it's a good game, so I can be a little bit of a game, so I can be a little bit of a game. Yeah, it was very nice to play. Okay, how do you feel like you have a chance to play with the people who come here as professionals, but now here is exposure for you. How good is it for yourself? Uh, it's a great thing for us. We all want to play so we can play and get used to it so we can play and get used to it. So it's inspiring and motivating to play with them. I think there are still a few games over there. We are still here on Donnerdag, Friday, Saturday. What can we still do for you? Um, I don't know. I sit here today after me. So from now on, I'm going to go and play my best and see how I can win. Thank you, Dene. Thank you. Well, that's the name who took on the girl who is ranked first here at the tournament. But you guys should stay tuned. We still have more games and more interviews coming your way. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears. All your hopes and your dreams, it takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends, six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick, being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex gel. Or miss those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex gel. Norflex gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex gel. It's Donny Boysen back with you here from the wondrous squash courts in Windhoek. You're watching action in the BDO Namibian Open for 2023. Up next in uh, this match will be Max Njala. He's uh, Namibia's number one, ranked 15th in the pro section of this competition. Competition playing with uh, against Kinde Temi Tope, Tope. Excuse me. He is from Nigeria, ranked second in this competition. With me now, taking the place of Stephen Berry, is uh, Andy Furi, uh, quite a younger player, but very involved with the sport of uh, squash. And I think we're going to see a Amdinger up next. Yes, Dani, I think it's going to be a good show today and the rest of the weekend. Um, hoping Max does some wonders for Wanderers Squash. Yeah, it's a great competition. First time ever uh, pro level at the Namibian uh, Open Championship. And another bit of history. First time NTV, Network TV is broadcasting squash as well. Mm. Since in the couple of years we've been going. So we hope to do more of this. And of course that big one next uh, week starting on the 25th four nation test series so that will be namibia south africa zimbabwe and who's the fourth one i can't remember offhand uh, we'll check that for you uh, but another country so some more great squash coming to you next week again here from the same court and like steven said previously 
during this broadcast. They call it a squash festival due to the great matches and of course competition also for the Namibian players here. Oh, they're warming up still there. So that's uh, Max Njala closest to the screen here in the white and blue. He's uh, warming up. He's playing for Namibia. Warming up together with Namibia's top ranked junior player. And it's Tony, it's good also to see the young players very involved here uh, at the tournament, even though they might not be playing yet. Uh, because it's a chance for them also to, to meet top-level players, the likes from, you know, Egypt, Nigeria and elsewhere. 100%, Donny. Yeah, we've been struggling here a bit with our juniors. We definitely need to start pushing squash and promoting it a lot more. And these events is exactly what we need. And this is really going to get the interest back into squash. And then hopefully we can send some stronger teams overseas and to South Africa whenever we play these PSA events it would be nice to send some stronger teams and Stephen said earlier that uh, if they could get squash into schools in Namibia that would make also a huge difference in terms of developing and uh, getting more players involved because of the more players you have the better chance you have of getting, you know, really top players than, that can compete at the next level. Yeah, that's the competition that we need to build with each other and really get some decent squash players out of Namibia. We're still looking at the warm-up here for the final match on the BDO court. This is the BDO court, four courts, of course, here at Wanderers. Uh, it's the Vision court, Sunlam court. This one, BDO, and then Papkovic also so also sponsors are crucial I think in any sport obviously but especially in in smaller sports to help them get to the next level oh, 100% yes and especially with non-team sports it's always a lot more difficult to get spectators down and obviously there's a lot less of us so it is always nice to have some great sponsors and really help promote the squash so, yes, I think sport in general in Namibia can always do with more support from, from sponsors. It's also a chance to see your name in the highlight as a, a business. And we, we earlier mentioned the long struggle of squash to, to get into the Olympic Games. But it's being played on Commonwealth level, the Asian... Uh, there's an Asian... Uh, Cup Pan American Cup. Uh, I see there will be again also a, a world championship quite soon. Uh, after some years, I think it's, uh, it's been a quite a long break from from that. And I think the idea for the local association, Tony, is also to build on on this. So I know they're already aiming to even get more international players next year to take part in the open year I really hope so because even from last year it was absolutely wonderful seeing top players from all over even South Africa Mr. Dierwald wow what a class player it was really a privilege to have people like that playing on our courts and for us to learn and for our juniors to see it's really something out of this world I must uh say that I love this uh, squash is not a sport I played actually <laughs> okay. uh, maybe just a little tiny bit at high school and I, I watched it sometimes on TV uh, on top level which is obviously brilliant and this is a very good quality of games we're seeing here in Namibia as well now yeah for sure you can just see in general 
just a decade back, I mean, how often did you ever get to see squash on um, on DSTV? That was very rare. Now you see it occurring more and more. Every other weekend you always see a few games on, which is really good for the sport. And this match uh, set to start at a quarter past six. If you just tuned in, we, we brought you three matches this afternoon. Since four o'clock, all of them won in straight sets so far. Uh, first one, Marianne Ashraf from uh, Egypt. She beat Adri Lambert from Namibia. And then the South African Damien Grunewald beat Lehigu van Rooyen, also from Namibia. And then it was uh, Mena Walid. She's from Egypt and she... Uh, played against the Nave van Sale, now playing for South Africa, but she spent a couple of years here in Namibia. If you just joined us, you already saw on our social media challenge, uh, channels some very good positive comments, also supporting specific players, because the South African players and, you know, the Nigerians, the Egyptians, they can also watch this online. Uh, is the place they, they can follow their favorite uh, players. You see there to the left on your screen there, the well-known sport reporter from the Namibian newspaper, Elga Schutz, a veteran of all sports. So the media also here, yeah, NBC streaming this as well. So a lot of interest from the media as well, which gives that extra exposure, don't you think, Tony? Oh, 100%. It really, really helps. And it's just so good for our sports. Um, being in Namibia, obviously there's not as many people around. So to get everyone together and get these top guys down here in Namibia is really fun and really enjoyable for all of us. And it's so nice that it's being broadcasted, listening, driving to work, listening to the radio, hearing it on the radio, gets you really excited for these kinds of tournaments. Yes, you can also catch this broadcast on NDR, that is Namibia Digital Radio, online. You can find it on the internet, and you'll find this commentary there as well, so really available globally. If you have internet, you can follow the BDO Namibian Open 2023. We saw now that Injala and his warm-up partner came off the court now so not long now before they will toss here for the start now tossing is actually not tossing they spin the racket and then determine which player will serve first if you're new to the sport we uh, tell you again they play to 11 points that's a set if they are drawn or actually if they're 10 each already uh, they must win with two points so then to win you'll have to get 12 playing over five sets uh, best out of five sets and like i say straight sets in the first three we've broadcasted uh, do you maybe think we're going to see a one going maybe four or five in the next match? Or do you think the oh, Nigerian really, will be too strong here? I really hope we can at least pull one game. At least one. And I really think we've got a good chance. We really do with Max. He's definitely one of our fittest players. Training lunchtimes, afternoons. So I really think it's our best bet right now to at least pull one game. So, uh, Tony, tell people a bit more about yourself and how, how did you get involved in squash? Okay, well, basically, I'm from Cape Town. Um, always played tennis, but you know, with Cape Town wins, you don't always get to play every day. And <laughs> eventually, when I was about nine years old, um, they needed a few fill-ins for the squash team. And they pulled a couple of the tennis guys across and asked them would they play. And I started playing and that was that. New favorite sport. Still carried on with everything else, but squash definitely took the lead. And from there, being quite young, I did manage to build quite a decent career. Did quite well as a junior, um, but unfortunately injuries took me out for a while. So it's nice to be back again a few years later. 
hopefully I can still show the people that I can play squash. <laughs> uh, Tony's involved behind the scenes with the ranking and other tasks and often, you know, a sport is just as good as its management and administration. We've seen it with some other Namibian sports who's struggling uh, to get back on, on its feet, almost there for, for some of them. So thanks to, to, I think, to everyone involved with, with Namibian squash. I, I think a tournament like this shows the, the good work you are doing. Oh, no, for sure. They really have been doing well. Um, our committee has really stepped up their game and they are pushing hard to really get some decent sponsors, good prize money. Um, and obviously with prize money, that brings in the international players. And the more international players that come here, the better we're going to get just by watching, playing. So we really appreciate our committee and all the hard work they've done behind the scenes, like you say, and just getting these tournaments going. Max Injala still warming up there here on the BDO court. It's ranked 15th in the PSA division of this competition. That is top level. P stands for professional. And uh, if you're only joining us now, that is like the uh, tennis professionals. That is the level. So some of these players are ranked also internationally. They compete internationally. And we're still waiting now to see uh, Anjala's oppon opponent, Keinde Temitopi from Nigeria. I don't know if he's probably, he's possibly warming up on another court. I see Injala is uh, having a look at his watch there, maybe getting a, a bit impatient. And now, now we see the opponent there in view, Temitopi from Nigeria. Also, still warming up a bit now. According to the usual procedure, each player has five minutes to warm up on each side of the court, and then they will switch over and have another five minutes to warm up. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll stretch it a bit shorter, make it a bit shorter. Uh, I don't know uh, why Timmy Topi. I'm late, but probably delayed for very good reasons. As physically, you know, if one looks at the two players, Injala looks a bit stronger physically, but of course in squash, the, if, if you're small, you're nim nimble, and you can be faster, just like in any other sport. Uh, Tony here uh, with me is also a bit of a smaller fellow, which uh, will make you quicker. Did you play any other sports? Um, before high school, I obviously enjoyed many sports. So I played my rugby, my cricket, uh, tennis, squash. I enjoyed my karate. Um, but obviously trying to take squash seriously hi, uh, later on when I got to high school, um, you obviously have to drop the other sports to push your main sport. And I did have a bursary, so I had to really push on the squash. And that's when I really started training very hard. Um, so unfortunately, I had to stop all the other sports to avoid any injuries. Yeah, it's always a pity, especially if a player has talent. And me being the novice, as soon as the play starts, I'll uh, hit the ball uh, in the court of Tony Ferry. <laughs> With the ins and outs, he will... And then take over, be a bit more in the forefront. But I'm looking forward to this one. And the tempo one could already see, you know, with the Egyptian players in the ladies' professional uh, division here. You know, they, they're very quick. They're very fit. Obviously, with us players in Namibia, you know, having to, to do it uh, after hours, during the weekends fitness and conditioning is I think always going to be uh, something that we're going to lack behind full professionals. 
Yeah, of course. If we obviously still have our daytime jobs, it is very difficult to get in the correct training that we need. Um, but we definitely trying our best, and I think Max is definitely going to show the best of us. He is really the fittest by far, so I really think he can he can give in a good game and a good fight for this match. Yeah, he is uh, number uh, Namibia's number one ranked player. That is Max Injala to your left. And definitely one of the nicest guys on court too. No, he's gets. an excellent human being. Really, really mm. fantastic chap. Really, really. But uh, a question to you now. I mean, uh, we remember the legendary days of the John McEnroe's of this world. Oh uh, yes, and of I, course. I, I, I think there might still be a, some tough characters on the tennis scene at least. Uh, are uh, squash players in general? You know, more more, behave, more behaved and respectful of, of of the rules of the game. I would like to say yes. Back in the day when I was a bit better, uh, I must say I was probably one of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> but later on, you do learn to grow up. Um, but yes, I know you do get um, into quite a bit of trouble showing off and doing silly things. So you do get. Uh, game bans, etc. So you really do have to try represent your country in the most fashionable as you can. Yeah, so we see they've uh, turned over now with the warm up. So Angela moved to the right side of the court there. Also hitting a bit to each other there. So the clock is ticking away. This will be an interesting match. Don't move an inch. Stay where you are. If you quick, you might be able to to run to the fridge quickly to get some refreshments. And please uh, join Namibia here at the Wondrous Squash Club in Ventuk tomorrow morning again. Action starts already at 9:30 here, all the way until. 7 o'clock, 7.30 the evening, the last matches to take place. And also uh, then on Friday, same thing starting at 9 o'clock, ending at about 8 o'clock in the evening. And on Saturday, the final playoff matches starting at 7 in the morning already early early morning so you will have to be an early riser ask your partner to kick you out of bed or ask a friend to phone you and then the big ones the final in the ladies PSA division will be at 4 o'clock 1600 hours on this exact same court you see on your screen followed by the men's final for the professionals here at five o'clock. Tony, thus far, the matches were reasonably short, you know, 15, 20 minutes, uh, straight sets. And as we already said, we hope, you know, we're going to, to see tougher competition, but also longer rallies. I think that's important in terms of measuring the quality of a match is how long players uh, play before someone wins the rally? Yes, you're 100% correct there. Uh, first round is normally always highest versus a lower rank, so the games would be a little bit shorter. Um, yeah, so definitely from second round onwards, the game time will definitely extend. The rallies will definitely become a lot longer, and then we'll see the games going to 35 to an hour quite easily especially with people like Max. Seen there from the stands here at the one with squash court. Players are back now there. And the last match of this afternoon on the BDO court. It's the Namibian Open champs. To start shortly. And Njala to serve first.
still feeling each other out here. The first ball of this match. Tony, we're already seeing a, a, a longer rally compared to, to the previous matches from the word go already here. And it's the Nigerian taking the lead there. First point, first set. Yeah, Max is one of those players. He likes to first test you out, make sure he's warm. He'll always run the first, first three, four points. He's going to try to push these rallies to get his fitness lacquer there. Both players uh, quite tall, those long legs, obviously, <laughs> if you're shorter, you have to run faster. Fewer strides if you're taller. Score now in Njala's favor, 2-1. So quick two points there for the Namibian. And a miss hit also there from Timmy Topi from Nigeria. Just a correction there, it seems it's two each now. I thought there was only one point there. And uh, after a good start, you know, things starting now to get a bit, a, a bit scrappy. Yeah, I think it's a bit of the nerves as well kicking in. So I think we just have to get through to at least five, six points. And then I think we're going to start going nicely. A few silly mistakes from both players. Three each now, the score, the even Stevens all level in the first set. Almost, almost there for Injala, just not getting to it. The point there for Timmy Topi taking the lead now with 4 3. now again of the matches we broadcasted on NTV uh, Tony definitely one where you know it's one point for you one point for me players at this stage very close we'll have to see you know if someone pulls away on the scoreboard Tony says yes that's indeed what we'll have to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I really think this is going to be a, a really nice game, but we'll see after this first one how it goes from there. Injala in the lead again now, the 1.54. Well, just for those watching, uh, also you'll see that players as soon as they've gone forward or backwards on the court they've tried to get back to the center that's the best position from which to be ready for for the next shot Excellent. yeah you'll see the best players will always be standing on the tee and the guys that look like they're moving the least are normally the ones that are the best players they make everything look very effortless there's the Namibian Injala pulling it slightly there. Two points. Six, Getting six, in those four. crucial points. Six, 
five now. That point awarded to Kenetopi from Nigeria. Keeping it there close to the wall. And then the change of direction there from Njala. Six all. If we get to ten all, they'll have to play until one player wins with a clear two points advantage before the set will be awarded. And up seven six. And there's moments in this match, Tony. I think you know it heats up a bit, longer rallies, and then it slows down a bit with with points uh, awarded quick quicker yeah the heart rates are definitely moving up and there's a few silly mistakes by both players at the moment i'm sure that will slowly disappear later on in the match Demitopi back in the lead now two points he'll try to stretch that lead to take the first set that was a critical point there by Demitopi Looks like they have just awarded a lift. Njala getting in some good shots here in this rally. Because you try to get the guy into the corner and then chase him out so that he doesn't get to the ball fast enough. Both these players really nimble on the court here. This rally still going. It's the best rally we've had in this match. Yo. Fantastic. Loud applause now, yeah, loud applause for the Namibian player. That was a critical point for Max to get that one, just to have a one point difference. He's closing the gap now, 7-8. One point behind Timmy Topi, 7-8. There's a term for that when you hit the ball into the corner. Yes, Steven we call told it a nick. A nick. Yes, that's correct. That's the best shot you can play and the best feeling you'll ever get from any shot in squash. Okay, thanks, Tony. That's Tony for me. With me here on Network TV. Also the Facebook page of Sport Rap. And of course Namibia Digital Radio. 9-8 now to the one-point lead for the Nigerian. Very, very well played there by Kahinda. Nine each. Still very close now. Really not getting going there. Ten in mind now, the one point lead for Tony Topi. That was set point. So they're coming out ten nine in the favor of Timmy Topi against Max Njala, the player from Namibia. So, I mean, that is as close as you can probably get unless you have to 
to play past the past the 11 Tony yeah nobody really wants to go past that because you really pushed your lungs to the maximum once you get to 9 and then if you both get to 10 it is quite demoralizing knowing that you have to still win by two more points and it really can be tough I'm sure we're going to see a brilliant second set as good and possibly even better I hope the game gets a bit more flowing in the second set but we'll have to see. We're taking a short break. We'll be back shortly. It takes heart and all the soul. A head stuck in the game. It takes every bone in your body, all the blood in your veins. And then more blood and more sweat, more tears, all your hopes and your dreams. It takes conquering fears. It's late nights and weekends. Six to sixes, nine to fives. It takes sacrifice and suffering every moment of our lives. It takes kick after kick. Being kicked when you're down. It takes fighting for hours for inches of ground. It takes every last line out, every last second spent. It takes absolute devotion. It takes 100%. Welcome back to our second set. Now waiting in this match. PSA professional level here, Namibia's Max Injala just losing out there on the first set against Timmy Topi. He is from Nigeria. They just tuned in. A good match so far. Expecting a lot of action here in the second set. Yeah, I think the nerves of both players should be out now, and we're really going to see the potential of both players in the second game. What a nick. One love. Yeah, I think this game, Max is definitely going to have to try to slow it down a little bit, get the ball a bit deeper. In the first game, he was definitely hitting a lot shorter than normal. Maybe try to take off the pace and lift it a bit more just to get that possession. But we'll see what his game plan is as we progress. Well, and Dala here with the first point and he makes it to love, second set. And now Bonnell. Two, one. The scoreboard there, the official one actually says it's two, one now in favor of Timitopi. Query there. No late three one. Mike in the Timitopi. Three one now the lead. So Injala started here with a very good point in this set. We're trying to get back into it now. Definitely some better squash there from Max. Great little drop there. We can also see Tematope definitely struggling a little bit with his shots and shot selection. You can definitely see the normal shots he normally plays are not going in right now. So maybe it's the altitude affecting him. Maybe still a bit of the nerves, but I'm sure we're going to see him getting in some really great winners later on in this match. Didn't call a let there. Yeah, Mr. Njale is not someone that likes playing lets and strokes. Mm -hmm. He really enjoys playing the game and not bothering too much about a let or a stroke unless it is really necessary. And that's what makes it so enjoyable for me playing someone like a Max. For the novices, uh, when you call a let, it means you suspect you were obstructed. 
And you're asking there with the referee to make a call, a decision. And if there's not a referee, the players uh, on court actually decides it for themselves, Stephen. So I guess that can sometimes maybe become a heated argument. It can really become that. So that's why on these top events, we always try to get some of our best referees just to make sure that there's no funny business. Yeah, good referees. The referees uh, did extra courses here in Namibia also to be able to officiate at the PSA level, the professional level. It's all skills that's yeah. staying in Namibia. And refereeing is no easy task because everyone sees it differently. <laughs> I think it's like that in each sport. And Jala now back in this 6-4. Six six four. Two points in the lead. Yeah, the rallies have not been as extended as was a, what I would have expected. They're definitely making a few more mistakes than usual. And it was a brilliant return there from Injala, and then he's just beaten finally here uh, at the back by Demi Topi. We had that very long rally in the first set and uh, not as long a rally in the second yet. And big applause there again for Injala. Oh. Making it 8-5 now, three-point lead in the second set for the Namibian. Crucial stage of the game right now. And this is really where you can gain a lot. So if Mr. Max can get these next few points, really makes it a lot easier when in the closing stages of this game. On game ball now, and Jala can win the set. Yeah. We'll just make uh, sure with our scorekeepers here that scoreboard is the correct reflection. It's definitely 11 5 there. shot there of the spectators they've gotten more and more throughout the late afternoon some yeah. people obviously can only come around here to the wondrous squash club after work so the correction for you there our apologies our scorekeepers got it the wrong way around there so 11-5 the winning margin in the second set Forky Inde Temitopi from Nigeria. We'll be taking a short break as well. See you now. NAMRAD strives to provide the best radiological care. We keep up to date with new technology and with our state-of-the-art department, all radiology services are provided at one convenient location. You can find them at Lady Pahamba Private Hospital, 
corner of Frankie Fredericks and on Beaker Street, Kleiner Cooper, Ventuk. We're back live. We're watching the final match of this evening in the BDO Namibia Open National Championship. This third set now between Namibia's Max Njala. He's playing against Kete Timitopi from Nigeria. And uh, almost uh, a close contest, yes, almost Njala getting the first set in the bag bit of a larger margin in the second so we hope the Namibian can fight back when I said to get back in the uh, shot there he's out hit the board I think you know uh, Tony it's always I think also in any sport you know there's a bit of extra chatters, you know, when you, you come up against, you know, players that are, you know, internationally well ranked. Oh, yes, yeah. Us as Namibians, we obviously don't get to play as many PSA events. Um, I myself have not actually played any, to be honest. And I'm not too sure how many Max has played. This could be his first as well. And it's just great to see first of many to come I'm sure I'm sure as well the only way to start is to start and that's the same way with everything in life 5-0 now the lead for Temi Topi and keep in mind Jala. Max isn't yeah. a lighty anymore yeah. he is over 40 now <laughs> and he did start playing squash at a very late age unfortunately and I would love to know what kind of a squash player he would have been if he had started as a junior and not in his 30s. He still looks in very good condition. He is the Namibian top ranked player. Almost caught out Timmy Topi there. It's the return in as well. And then things going awry there. Yeah, we're really seeing the class now of the Nigerian player. And up two, six. Unforced error there. And by Timmy Topi. Gives Njala another point. Into the corner. Along to the back there by Njala. Still some fighting spirit here in the Namibian player. Uh, bit unlucky there, Njala shakes the head. It was close, close call. Yeah, being pushed into a corner a bit. Really getting pressurized here in this third game. Hopefully he can try to slow it down a little bit. Oh, hit excellent winners like that. And now 3-7. There's big applause here. For oh, that shot, Injala serves. 4-7. Also returns here. Is this the fight back we were waiting for? really stuttering at the moment there's a call there seems it's a late call there by Timmy Topi Decision, the final decision, and that shot. 
7-4 now, three-point lead for Timmy Topi. Plays on again. Jala reached there to get to that ball. Jala pushing really hard to try to keep up in this one. Much better rally here as well. Slowing things down a bit there, Njala. Playing cuts and nails, then the change of direction. Both players moving really nicely. Definitely the best mm. rally of this game. Excellent rally there. Point eight finally four. going to Timmy Topi. Namibia is really going to have to push hard now if he wants to try to get this final game. Try to get it into four sets. And applause now there. And a smile, a smile from Timmy Topi. Five, five, another point to the Namibian, trailing with three again. Excellent there from Mr. Njala, slowly creeping closer and closer. Let's see if Timmy Topi tries to finish this off now. This is where the mental, the mental game really comes into squash. Once you're getting to that eight, nine points, is that when it's really tough and you cannot make any mistakes like Max has just done. And it's just like Injala did there. He also showed it. One can see that emotion there. Now a three-point lead for the Nigerian. And he loses the point there. 9-7 now. Injala creeping back into this match. You want to get this point. If Timmy Topi gets it, it will be set and match point up next. And our team seven match ball. And it's with Timmy Topi, and indeed, he can make it the match winner here. Yeah? It's just great for Namibians to actually get to see squash like this and for us to actually play these top players. Hard hit there by Injala. <laughs> Timmy Topi standing behind him. Needing the ball back, Injala pulling back another point there, 10 8 now. Rally again. Oh, great shots here. And it's Injala winning that point. It brings him within one now. Excellent fetching there from Mr. Injala. Nine, ten. Really showing the spirit of squash and not giving up. Yeah, Excellent to see. It is a turn, turning out to be a great match, this. But static at times, but some lovely rallies as well. And that's the set and the match. Good spirit there from the two players, giving each other a hug. 11-9, 11-5, 11-9. So a good fight put up by Max Injala. The Namibian, but the match goes to Kende Timitopi from Nigeria. He moves on to the next round in the professional level. Njala will take part further in the A-level competition for men. And it was lovely to have you with us, uh, Tony. 
No, thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here. Final word on the first day of the BDO Namibian Open. Excellent squash. Well run. I must say it's so good to see a turnout like this on a weekday. I can't say I've ever seen that in Namibia before at any other tournament so far. It's time uh, for us here yeah, at least to say goodbye. Uh, it seems we won't be bringing you back uh, with interviews there from the court. We'll be back on NTV and our other platforms tomorrow, same time. So tune in again for some excellent squash. We are joined by Samuel all the way from Nigeria. Samuel, uh, the first round started off really slow for you. I think you were very composed. But just tell us, how was this match today with uh, Max and Jala? Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's a well welcoming match. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to learn my mistake because uh, actually we arrived yesterday and uh, I think we're still starting to acclimatize with the weather. So it's been really tough playing in this condition, coming all the way from Nigeria. You know the weather condition in Nigeria, so much different from this. So I'm finding it very difficult to cope here, but uh, uh, at the same time, I just had to pull my head through. And I, I made sure I kind of composed my game as one of the top seeded players. Uh -huh. Okay, well, uh, you, you, you were talking about you lost your first seed two weeks ago. Can you just tell us uh, what happened there and how do you feel coming back, coming to Namibia and winning your game against uh, Max and Jala? Huh? Uh, I think I feel good, but it's not been easy to just lose the number one spot, though I've been withholding it for a long time, but uh, I have a lot of competition in Nigeria as well, which uh, I, you, I'm, we're all number one, we do fight for the position together, and it's been really tough. Before coming to Namibia, I still actually won a PSA close satellite tournament in Nigeria, uh, but defeating the current number one, but then it's still... Uh, a, a move for us to do better and uh, that's what we are trying to put on on the show here in, in Namibia to come play different and and uh, foreigner so uh, we could possibly gain more experience and exposure and uh, subsequently improve in world ranking because this is a PSA uh, the PSA ranking tournament okay well uh, last question for me uh, you are here in Namibia what can Namibians expect from you uh, in the coming days in this tournament I think uh, Namibia should wrote for the best. I know how fantastic a player I am and uh, uh, as one of the top seeded players as well, I'm trying to put all my effort to make sure I come successful in this tournament. Hopefully I take it home and uh, give the glory to Nigeria and uh, uh, everybody who has supported me. I don't mind the Namibian guys too supporting me for the glory. It all works hand in hand. And uh, I'll be glad to, to, to get the whole support I've needed and make sure I put in all my effort to, make, to win the tournament. Okay, thank you for your time, Samuel. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, there you heard it from the man himself. That was Samuel who just gave us a beautiful update of what was happening. We will, t we will try to get to Max and Jala. I'm sure he's still busy recovering from that big match that we just had. But from me, it is all that I have for now.